You are listening to part 86 of our series, Seven Medicines, The Wise Woman Way, with Susan Wheat at Time Monk Radio. Hello, Susan. Welcome back to Time Monk Radio. Hi, Jim and I. Thanks. Did you go home and have some soy milk with turmeric in it? No, I did not, but I have had matcha tea. Oh, did you like it? Yeah, I like it. I do. It's different than what we would think of as green tea. I mean, it is green tea. Yeah, it's it was stronger to me than the it typical is green tea. stronger, and it's murkier. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're so used to tea being like, you know, a kind of clear right. beverage. And uh, I, I know the first time I was, you know, presented with this whisk bowl of murky green stuff, I thought, hmm, never seen anything like this before. But it's, you know, it kind of grows on you. Yeah, it does. It's not something I drink first thing in the morning, though. Fair amount of caffeine in it. Yeah. Could easily replace morning coffee if somebody wanted it to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let us continue um, to look at the many plants that can help protect us against radiation. I also hope that this is making you feel more at ease in uh, our radioactive world. Somewhat. <laughs> Somewhat. <laughs> These things are actually tasty and easy to add to your diet. And, um, in fact, have really good scientific studies backing them up. The nature of this show is, is not that I would want to go specifically into those studies. But if you, you know, Google around, uh, you will be able to see that this is not, not fringe stuff, as I mentioned, uh, of the U.S. military is actually looking into uh, radioprotective plants, um, just in case. So what are some more of those? Ginkgo, one of everybody's favorite ginkgo. Ginkgo is one of those herbs that, that kind of came on the scene with a big kabang. Wow, this is great. It makes you think better, and it helps if you has, have Alzheimer's. And then it was kind of, kind of kapow, kind of shot down. Oh, we studied ginkgo, and it didn't do much of anything at all. Um, and, of course, the herbalists say, well, golly gee, you know, like here's this drug you give people. And that drug, like, if somebody can remember three things and then you give them the drug, they can remember 3.1 things. So, you know, to say that the ginkgo isn't doing much is, isn't really to put it down because the drug doesn't do much at all. But let's look at some other things that ginkgo can do. When I was writing down there, I was thrilled to learn that women who take ginkgo regularly for six months or longer slash their rate of ovarian cancer. It turns out that ginkgoides special substances in the ginkgo biloba actually can go into the ovaries and kill ovarian cancer cells. It would not surprise me if perhaps these ginkgoides can go anywhere and kill cancer cells. In fact, there are good studies showing that um, ginkgo biloba um, can reduce the results of DNA damage. In other words, if the DNA has already been damaged and ginkgo is taken, the results of that damage are not going to be so severe. It is radioprotective ginkgo and certainly better to do it beforehand, but also has some effect afterwards. In fact, the effects of ginkgo are so powerful that ginkgo was used to treat workers at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant long after their exposure to radioactivity. More recently, ginkgo has been studied as a way to protect and been found quite successful in protecting animal organs from direct radiation-induced damage and human cells from damage following radioactive treatments of all kinds, including the inhaling, ingesting, or injecting of radioactive compounds. Mentioned ginseng before, and uh, here is ginseng again with a little more specific information. Um, ginseng protects against DNA damage. It especially protects hair follicles and other rapidly reproducing healthy tissues, such as the gut lining, 
from radiation damage. It has been shown to be one of the best protectors, as we said before, for a variety of radiation-sensitive tissues, including bone marrow cells, spleen cells, and testicle cells. Ginseng's immunomodulatory effects make it especially useful in defending the body against the ravages of radiation injury when radiation treatments go on for extended period. North American ginseng has recently been found to protect human white blood cells from DNA damage even if taken up to 90 minutes following the radiation exposure. So we have a variety of things that are beforehand protectors. Take these things, do these things, drink these things before you have that radiation test or before you get that radiation treatment. And then we have things that can be used afterwards um, most of them need to be done pretty soon afterwards. So afterwards generally doesn't mean months afterwards. It usually means an hour or so afterwards. Or in the case of ginseng, no more than 90 minutes. And that's probably a good threshold for the other things that we're mentioning as well. If you're going to use something afterwards to deal with the radiation. Do it within 90 minutes or an hour and a half of the exposure to the radiation. Milk, thistle, silymarin, and you know, all thistles, and it's milk, thistle, thistle seed, and all thistle seeds. Now, you need a whole team of goldfinches to catch them for you. Milk thistle seeds, like dandelion seeds, are pretty hard to catch, and they go flitting and flying and floating around. And it's one of the reasons that milk thistle seeds are used is because they're heavier and easier to gather, although somebody who grew it told me that she had taken to harvesting them when they were not yet ripe to prevent them from escaping her, which she said that they very much enjoy doing. So the milk thistle, the seeds of milk thistle, are what's studied, but that doesn't mean you can't use the seeds of any thistle that happen to be nearby you or that you happen to be growing. And they have been found to protect the liver from radiation damage as well as to protect the liver from chemical damage. Milk thistle seed extract scavenges free radicals and is a direct antioxidant that has a very rem excellent protective value when used generally beforehand. I always think of milk thistle as a beforehand herb. There are a few supplements, vitamins, and so on that can protect against radiation. I generally don't use supplements of any kind, but it's certainly worth mentioning to you, especially if for some reason uh, perhaps you are at the same time nauseated and suggestions to take anything orally or met with a, a roll of the eye, sometimes in those situations, a supplement can be a good choice. Sam E, capital S, capital A, capital M, and little E is S, adenosylmethionine. It is a powerful methyl group donator that is essential at the cellular level in terms of making enzymes that repair DNA. So... Because radiation suppresses SAMI levels, it has been suggested that taking SAMI before or after radiation treatments or radiation tests is 
not to even be considered supplemental, but to be considered replacement for what has been damaged. N-acetylcysteine, or NAC, is a sulfur-containing compound that supports antioxidant activity in the cells, thus making it a very effective radioprotective agent. NAC stops liver damage from radiation in mice, reduces oxidative damage and DNA damage both before and after radiation exposure. NAC also stimulates the release of cytokines which protect the bone marrow against radiation. And it prevents and protects against DNA damage. Yes, NAC supplements are available. And interestingly enough, in a test of mice exposed to a lethal dose of x-rays, NAC significantly increased 30 days survival, and here's the really important part, whether it was given before or after the exposure, the effect was the same. And again, this kind of statement doesn't tell us how long after the exposure, so let's use that ginseng time frame and just figure that we need to do it within 90 minutes. A, C, E, the ACE vitamins are antioxidants. Are they a good thing to take to protect us against radiation? I don't think so. Not in supplemental form. Do I think that really loading your body with carotenes is a great way to protect against radiation damage? I do. And there are lots of foods that are rich in carotenes, and a lot of tasty and good ways to get those carotenes. Perhaps the substance that is most concentrated in carotenes is tomato paste. But tomato sauce runs a close second there. Carrot juice is also a fair source of carotenes. It also contains an anti-cancer compound that is water-soluble. And so it can be leached out by cooking the carrots, but is preserved when the carrots are juiced. Baked sweet potatoes, papaya, mango, and cantaloupe. Leafy greens, lots and lots of leafy greens. These are good sources of carotenes and the rate. Vitamin C is fairly easily found in any, but of course the citrus family is renowned for the amount of vitamin C that it has. Pretty easy in general, I tell my students to get enough vitamin C if every day you lean over, pick the leaf of a wild plant and eat it. You won't get the minerals from that plant, but you will get the vitamin C. The Indian gooseberry, amla, has been shown to increase survival time and reduce the death rate of mice exposed to whole body radiation. Amla protects against lipid damage and has a very protective effect against the cells of the intestines. Hmm. And I have left till last my three favorite ways of protecting myself from radiation damage. The first one is seaweed. And let me read a little bit to you from my Green Book Healing Wise. Superb protection from modern pollutants, heavy metals, and radioactivity is the gift of seaweed, the bodyguard. 
Workers at Swedish nuclear power plants eat seaweed to reduce and eliminate their absorption of strontium-90, a radioactive element. Alginic acid, one of the main components of seaweed, binds with radioactive strontium to form strontium alginate, an insoluble compound which is rapidly eliminated from the gastrointestinal tract. This reduces absorption of strontium-90 by 50 to 90 percent, depending on the person. Strontium-90 is released in nuclear accidents. Of course, that's what people are really concerned about with Fukushima, as well as in the running of nuclear power plants, and most of us don't think about that. And it has, interestingly enough, a very high affinity for calcium. So what tends to happen is that the strontium-90 goes into the bones. And remember that that bone marrow and the stem cells are in there and they are incredibly vulnerable. So this is a big problem. And it's even more of a problem because when strontium-90 is in the air, then it gets concentrated into calcium-rich foods such as leafy greens and milk. If you eat leafy greens or milk that have been contaminated with strontium-90, then it will, in fact, enter your bone marrow where it can damage delicate immune and blood cells. But eating seaweed eliminates it, and not just for strontium-90. In fact, they have found that consistently eating seaweed helps eliminate any radioactive particles that have already been absorbed. It repairs damage that's already been done to the bone marrow, and it prevents further absorption of uh, strontium-90 and other radioactive particles by parts of the body that we don't want absorbing these things. Remember that when we're talking about seaweed, that if you buy powdered seaweed, there's a fair chance that the algin, the very thing you want, remember, we want it to turn into an algin 8, that the algin may have already been removed from that seaweed. So what I suggest always is to get your seaweed whole. And if you need or want to make it more attractive to put in your food, toast it in a cast iron skillet or in the oven until it gets crisp. And you will think that that crispy, salty seaweed is the best that you have ever, ever tasted. Neriocystis kelp is especially good this way. And because it is a brown seaweed, it is quite rich in algae. Other seaweeds, like nori, um, do not have as much algae as the kelp seaweeds. So find some ways to get those heavier seaweeds in your diet if you've made a good first step of including nori in your diet and thanks to the seaweed processors who are making nori so easy for everyone to get and carry around. If you've already done that, then take the second step and bring other seaweeds into your soups, into your stews, into your tomato sauce, into your body, into your life. Seaweed my vote for one of the greatest of all protectors against radioactivity with a huge amount of scientific evidence behind it. Burdock, 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 burdock root removes radioactive isotopes from the body. Yes, it is. You can use the fresh root, a quarter pound a day, or a pint of dried root infusion or fresh root infusion daily for the duration of your exposure to the radiation. In other words, if you're getting a radiation radiation treatment today, be sure to consume some burdock today, whether you're drinking burdock tea or whether you're actually eating the burdock root. And burdock is sold as gobo. It is available as a fresh vegetable, usually in the late summer, early fall at health food stores. Um, but dried burdock root uh, to make a infusion is available at all times. And 
dried burdock root can also be thrown into soups, tomato sauces, stews, and so on to get more of those qualities extracted from the root by that long, slow cooking. Seaweed, burdock, and miso. Miso is the classic for preventing damage from radiation. I am sure you have heard that in Japan, survivors who did not get breast cancer in the areas where nuclear bombs were dropped tended to be people who drank a lot of miso soup. And by a lot, three to five bowls of miso soup a day. It really is a lot. How... Ever, what researchers at McGill University have found is that you don't have to drink that much. Any amount of miso will act to protect the tissues against radiation. And let's stop for a moment and think about what a traditional miso soup in Japan would actually be like. Now, Japanese food has hit America big time. And with it comes bowls of miso soup, which bear, I would be polite and say little resemblance to miso soup as it is traditionally known in Japan. But the fact of the matter is it bears virtually no resemblance to miso soup. Although occasionally I get a bowl of miso soup in which someone has um, almost minced up tofu and put three or four tiny little minced up cubes of tofu into the soup. So let's look at miso soup from the Japanese perspective. Since we're saying one of the ways that we know that, know that it works is because of these Japanese people. So first of all, dashi is made. The broth of the miso soup is called dashi. And dashi is made well before the miso soup is made. And dashi includes a variety of things. It always includes little fishes. It always includes seaweed and a seaweed of the kelp varieties like wakame or kombu. It frequently includes burdock root. And once the dashi is made and ready to be strained, and to be used to make miso soup. It is indeed traditional that some tofu, but larger amounts than what we're seeing in most restaurants, be added to that miso broth. What a perfect combination. What an elegant dish to set before the queen who is doing a radiation treatment has it done a radiation test or who is concerned about radioactivity in her life? What else? I am now looking at my book, Breast Cancer Question Mark, Breast Health Exclamation Point, The Wise Woman Way. And there is a chapter on radiation therapy and, of course, things that we can help that we can do to help protect ourselves against the collateral damage of that radiation therapy. Tissues that are damaged by radiation become irritated and inflamed. And if this happens, you can, you can actually see it. So if you have a session of radiation and everything seems fine, it probably is fine. But if the skin becomes irritated or inflamed, then that tissue has been damaged by radiation. And as I said, this will usually be visible within 15 minutes of the treatment. Unfortunately, what happens is that the skin that has been damaged like that by radiation begins to thicken. And it actually builds up a kind of scar tissue, um, which then makes it very difficult for the blood vessels to get through. And it's not just the skin. This can also happen in the blood vessels, the lungs, and 
the heart tissues. So anything that you already do, that you already like, that inhibits inflammation for you is a wonderful thing to do. We've already talked about some anti-inflammatory herbs, and it is recommended that anti-inflammatories be consumed for several hours immediately following the treatment to forestall late-stage radiation damage. Guinea pigs bombarded with whole body radiation lived a lot longer if they also got to chow down on broccoli and cabbage. Broccoli and cabbage don't know you're not a guinea pig. It will work for humans, too, because broccoli and cabbage, they are very bad to protect yourselves from the damaging effects of radiation. So, we also see that licorice... Extracts have been shown to block DNA damage, and that melatonin also seems to protect against DNA damage. But again, to me, these are much less important than the things that we have been talking about, but especially our burdock, seaweed, miso, and a bit of soy. So, what have we found out? We have found out that if we are going to... uh, go to the Seventh River and use radiation as a treatment, or if we are going to have a test that uses in checks or causes us to, to consume in some way radioactive materials, then there is not just, oh, well, the damage has been done, but there are things that we can do to protect ourselves both before and after. I made a little list. I might have left a couple off. Um, Hopefully you have heard in our discussion some that seem of great importance to you. And if I left your favorite off the list, add it on. Drink grape juice, eat grapes, or have a glass of wine before every x-ray, even if it's an x-ray at the dentist. Drink green tea on a regular basis, but especially if you're going to have anything to do with radiation. Look for sources of genistein. Soy is not the only source of genistein, but several cups of soy beverage added to your daily diet for a couple of weeks before any test with with radiation will be adequate to protect your cells. You can also find extracts of curcumin, that's the active part of the turmeric, Ginseng and ginkgo tinctures of these herbs are fairly easy to come by, and especially when taken at the upper end of the recommended dosage range, have been found to help people not be damaged by the radiation. Exercise. Yes, believe it or not, exercising helps your body to deal with radiation. So if you have had exposure to radiation, whether it was voluntary for a test or a treatment or involuntary through the environment, exercise, along with the other things that we've been mentioning, is an excellent way to help your body clear that radioactivity out. Yes, it's true that radioactive is cumulative and that the damage done by radioactive Exposure increases every time there's a new test. But that statement is not so true when we are using herbs and herbal medicine. Eat carrots, yams, papaya, cantaloupe, and mango, and the more cooked 
frozen or dehydrated, the better. Be sure to drink your nourishing herbal infusions. And minimize your exposure to other oxidant-inducing stresses like tobacco smoke and alcohol. If you're going to be doing a treatment with radiation, it is strongly advised not to smoke or drink. And miso soup with seaweed and burdock. There are green blessings everywhere to help us with all of our problems. And that is the end of our show for this week. Well, thank you so much, Susan. I enjoyed it, as always. And this concludes part 86 of our series, The Seven Medicines, The Wise Woman Way, with Susan Weed at Time Monk Radio.